discussing the appeal court, which is rules the toppling of a statue of the slave trader Edward Colston was a violent act. They also ruled that human rights protections under the European Convention weren't available as a defence. The so-called Colston Four were charged with criminal damage after the memorial to the Bristol slave trader was torn down back in June 2020. But they were all cleared at the city's Crown Court after a trial in January. Here to discuss the impact of the ruling is Steve Barris, a barrister. Steve, thank you very much for your time. What does this verdict mean in regards to the case of the Colston Four? This ultimately doesn't actually change anything, does it? No, and that's, that itself is very important in its own right under our constitution. So we have a rule that if you've been tried for something and found you know, to, to not be guilty, then, then that's it, okay? And so nothing that I say, nothing that the appeal court has said relates to those four individuals at all. And I hope I've always been uh, clear about that at, at all times. Their outcome won't change. But what the case, so, what the case was, was a symptom of a problem within the law itself. So the law got itself into a bit of a mess, a bit of a muddle. And the reason for that is pretty simple. You've, and I've, I racked my brains for how to explain this best to your viewers, so I hope I, hope I will. Legal systems are a lot like games. So mm. a game is something that people do which has a set of rules. And if you've got an established game like football, football has rules and it's on a pitch and there it is. Everybody knows the rules of football. If you impose a second game on top of that original game, so if you suddenly import the rules of rugby onto football, then you'll cause all sorts of little tensions. You know, the, the first example, in, if we stay with my, my metaphor for a little bit, is, is the first guy who tries to pick up the ball. We're going to have a problem there. Can you pick up the ball or can you not pick up the ball? Well, under the old rules, you couldn't. And under the new ones, you can. And now we've got a problem. And by importing the uh, European Convention on Human Rights into our law, which is what the Human Rights Act did, we imported a legal problem. And it was, it's called, in this context, it's called the test of proportionality. And so what everybody did was sit around and scratch their heads and say, well, we all want peaceful protests. And that's how we've dealt with it for years. We say just protest must be peaceful. We maintain the king's peace, and it won't, we have a new king, but it was always the, the, the king's peace, and that's what we do. But the Europeans use a test of proportionality, and because it's different, our police didn't really know what it was. And that's why, if you remember the Extinction Rebellion protesters, oh, that's why that so. caused trouble here. And it, you know, our, our police did not know what to do about them. But the German police, who are very used to using the old, their test of proportionality, they didn't have a problem. They, they knew exactly what to do. And our old police, before the Human Rights Act, they would have known exactly what to do. But there was a, there was a temporary tension in, in the law. And now our very, very, very talented law chief justice has fixed it. So you but, cannot but Steve, now... Steve, explain right. for my viewers, though, explain for me, how can it be, right, that... and I've reiterate the point that you made at the very start there quite sternly. This does not change the ruling. Then it doesn't imply that the four were actually guilty of criminal damage. But what I want to know from you is if you take that idea of proportionality, it's surely not proportionate to tear down a piece of public property, is it? Well, I mean, I, I would have agreed with you on the basis of what the test of proportionality is. But the, the reason it caused confusion was just the, the, this newness, the fact yeah. that it wasn't our old way of doing it. And what the Lord Chief Justice flags is that our way of dealing with this was, look, if the protest causes technical, you know, criminal damage, like technically, you know, writing with chalk on the streets, you know, that's technical, minimal criminal damage. The chalk's going to wash away the next time the rain comes along and, you know, we would have said, well, that's not breaking the king's peace. That's not interfering with peace. And we would have, our legal system would have caught that at the prosecution stage. The prosecutors would have said, well, it's not in the interests to prosecute. So it all goes away. The European answer is to apply this proportionality test. It, as, you, as you say, I think it gets you to exactly the same place. Because again, it's not really proportional to arrest somebody if they write something in a perfectly in innocent, peaceful process on, in chalk on the floor. So it, often you, 
you do get to the, exactly the same place by applying two different ways of doing things within the law. The tension was its newness. And Steve, just finally there, the lawyers for the Colston Four have actually expressed disappointment about the judge's verdict. Why do you think that is? I would have to go away and see what they have said, because I would find that surprising. I don't think the outcome uh, by the Lord Chief Justice um, was in any way particularly surprising, which is why when the Colston trial happened, I, would, I felt able to write on it, yeah. I think, within a few days. And then it took the attorney, then the attorney general had a, a, a proper think, because she's a very gifted lawyer, this is Suella Braverman. And she decided, oh, well, this is a bit rum. Um, I best ask the courts to help. And then he's gone to the courts. And to his credit, I will give him a shout out. There is an, an anonymous legal blogger called Tony Dowson, who wrote a very lengthy and learned blog on this, setting out exactly why the law had been had got itself into a muddle. And the Lord Chief Justice has effectively agreed with him. I mean, that's a hell of an endorsement. I mean, the, yeah. the Lord Chief Justice has agreed with me, with Suella Braverman, and with this, with this anonymous uh, legal blogger. That, but if you do law, then that should have been foreseeable. I don't see why that was surprising. So if, if some lawyers are still confused, then I'd have to go away and see what they're confused about. Often, people try to drag it back to the four individuals themselves and the outcome of the trial. But as you, you dealt with at the start of this piece, it's not about that. It's about yeah. making sure that the law is functioning properly. And now, because what the Lord Chief Justice has done has effectively said what you said, well, proportionality and the interests of the public, they get us to the same place. So realistic... And Steve, no I one... think so many of my viewers are of the view that the law hasn't been functioning properly over recent years. So this will be music to their ears. But Steve, we're going to have to read it there. I would urge everyone, though, to find you online and read that piece because it was a really, really interesting read. Steve Barrett there, the barrister, thank you very much for your time.